mass graves at this grove which has been declared sacred. It is a taboo to farm or to destroy the vegetation at the grove. Running through the grove is the Nyonkosu River where the enslaved had their last bath on their motherland. I wonder what story the river has to tell. I wonder what went through the minds of the millions of enslaved as they stared at the murmuring water. As they stood on the banks, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder why all this had to happen. God, I wonder. I keep wondering. For most Africans, especially those from the diaspora, this is a great moment, a never to be forgotten experience. To see, feel, smell and wash in the very water where over 500 years ago their forebears had a last wash. It is a pilgrimage, a pilgrimage to discovering their roots and identity as Africans. John Carson and Crystal lie in state at our sin mansion. We mourn, we mourn Crystal, we mourn John Carson, we mourn the millions of ancestors who left our shores in chains to slavery and bondage. We honor their memory with a royal funeral, for royals they are. We drum and dance, dance in their honor, dances which have been passed down from generation to generation, dances which we know will stir up feelings of nostalgia in the souls of the departed ancestors. Kusapu, presidential advisor for chieftaincy affairs, himself a chief, graces the occasion with a complete retinue of courtiers. It is now the turn of the chief mourner, the paramount chief of the Asin traditional area, Nana Kwame Inchi Between his lips is pepper. It is a symbol of emergency, of urgency, of life and death. This shows the seriousness of the extent to which the people of Asin consider this occasion. Today, Mr. Kojo Yanka officially hands over the remains to Nana Kwamenchi the Twelfth of Carson and Crystal to Asin Manso for the official interment to be pronounced. Let us be aware that the second phase of our emancipation struggle is to free ourselves from mental slavery. We have redeemed our physical bodies from human flesh chattel property and our land of colonial political rule, but we have not claimed or reclaimed our African mind. We must be quickened out of the graves of our minds. Our minds must be replanted into the soul and destiny of our African selves without permission or apology.
ancestors finally have an eternal resting place. The circle at last is complete, never to be broken again. Africans and all people of African descent have a duty to see to it. Never again should we allow ourselves to be dominated, oppressed, or fooled into fighting one another. I feel that because of this day, many more black African people around the world will look at Ghana and, and not only think of coming back to live, but to invest in Africa. So on the occasion of the first Emancipation Day celebration on the African continent, we fraternize, we reflect, we rededicate ourselves to the ideals of the fathers of Pan-Africanism. The homecoming of the remains of the two African ancestors should serve to unite Africans on the continent with Africans in the diaspora. Together we can transform our continent from one of poverty to one of wealth and power. Africans may be poor, but Mother Africa is rich. Africa still abounds in vast natural resources. Across the ocean, a sizable amount of hard cash is being turned over annually by blacks in the diaspora. In the U.S. alone, the black population has control of over some 500 billion U.S. dollars. Much of that money, and money from other diasporan strongholds, if attracted to the shores of the continent for investment into the abundant natural resources and budding industries, could set the continent to realizing the next and crucial stage of emancipation, economic emancipation. Economic emancipation, no doubt, is as important as emancipation from slavery, which we are celebrating today. Ghana has symbolically opened the door of no return to all Africans in the diaspora. This is an open invitation to all to return to the motherland, for all to feel at home, for all to join hands and together build one strong African continent. <laughs>